Dr. Joe here of the askdrjoe.org and the 2020 forum.com. So lots of people do not understand how the GLP-1 agonist medications like Wigovi, Ozempic, Trulicity, Monjaro, they don't understand how they work. And if you are using these medications or considering going on them, well, it makes sense that you understand how they work. So that is what is on offer in this very video. And I'm also going to explain to you how a particular complication that has resulted in a lawsuit, how that complication comes about. You know, this, this is a complication of using these medications. I'm going to explain that to you, how it comes about. And um, as a bonus, there is also an aesthetic implication that can result in a serious complication. All right. Hopefully I haven't confused you. Yes, there's a serious uh, surgical implication uh, when you're using these medications that you need to be aware of. Nobody's talking about it, but I have a duty to highlight it to you because if you are considering using these medications or you're using them and you are being listed for surgical procedure, you need to be aware of this very uh, implication because um, it could be life-saving. Yes, it could be life-saving. So um, let's do it then. Okay, so here's how these uh, GLP-1 medications work. So examples of the GLP-1 medications would be Wigovi, Ozempic, Monjaro, Trulicity. Here's how they work. They work via two methods. So I'll start off with method one. And in method one, the way they work is they stimulate insulin secretion. Okay, they stimulate insulin secretion. They also block the release of glucagon hormone. Now, glucagon hormone under normal circumstances will uh, trigger the uh, release of sugar from uh, the liver and that increases blood sugar levels. So they block that action. of. So the combination of the stimulation of insulin secretion and the blockage of glucagon hormone will result in lower blood sugar levels, okay? Lower blood sugar levels. And this was the reason why these medications were developed in the first place, to uh, help with diabetes management by uh, lowering blood sugar levels. So that is how they primarily work. But that is not the only way they work. They also have a second mechanism of action, and which is that they tell the brain that you're full. So that leads to satiety. Um, you know, you have that feeling of satisfaction and you don't want to continue eating. So they tell the brain that you're full. They also slow down stomach emptying. So the net effect of all of this is that you crave food less. So that leads to appetite reduction. That's the second mechanism of action. So method one, they stimulate insulin secretion and also block glucagon release, which controls blood sugar levels. And method two, they tell the brain that you're full, so they increase satiety and also slow down stomach emptying, which leads to appetite reduction. And the net result of all of this is that you eat less often, okay? You eat less often. And when you do eat, you eat less quantity, okay? Now, that's good. The other thing is that you don't think about food all the time. So if you're somebody who starts thinking about food one hour after your last meal, that doesn't happen when you are on these medications. And the overall effect of all of that is that your weight comes down. And everyone is happy, okay? It's happy days. All of this, though, comes at a cost, okay? It comes at a cost. For some people, not everybody, okay? For some people, not everybody. And, uh, you know, this at least to a little bit of unhappy face. And this cost is that method two is exaggerated in some individuals. So method two, which is uh, telling the brain that you're full and the slowing down of stomach emptying is exaggerated in some individuals. And what that means is that in these individuals, stomach emptying is delayed by four to five folds in some individuals. Okay. So whereas normally the Stomach emptying time is usually one and a half to two hours. If you push it four hours maximum, um, in some individuals, the food that they eat remains in the stomach for 12 hours, 14 hours, even 16 hours in some individuals. And that's not a good thing. Okay, that's not a good thing. 
And the net result of that is that some people end up with abdominal pain. They feel bloated. If, if the food is hanging around your stomach for hours on end, you're going to feel bloated. And that leads to nausea and vomiting in some individuals. And a feeling of fullness after just a few bites of food when you have your next meal. And also, if the food is hanging around your stomach for hours on end, you may end up with bad breath. And of course, loss of appetite. And of course, you're going to lose weight because you're eating less often. You're probably eating just once a day or once in two days. And that leads to gastroparesis, which is the latest side effect that is beginning to rear its ugly head. Gastroparesis is the slowing down of this uh, stomach emptying. Gastroparesis. Very, very important. And here is one risk that nobody talks about, and I feel I needed to highlight it in this very video. And that is the anesthetic implications if you are coming in for a surgical procedure. Okay? A full stomach during surgery is a serious, serious risk. Nobody talks about this, but I am telling you about it now. And what that means is that if you are coming in for any surgical procedure, let your anesthesiologist or anesthetist know ahead of time that you are taking these medications and he can then give you the right instructions on what to do. Because full stomach during surgery is a complication that no anesthetist or anesthesiologist wants to deal with. So um, very, very important. Uh, and I felt I needed to highlight it in this very video. Okay, uh, before we continue, a quick plug. This is my book on managing high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. Links to get a book right below this very video. Now, I'm hoping that you've learned a thing or two regarding these GLP-1 agonist medications and uh, you understand them a little bit more now. And also that if you are considering going in for surgery and you're using any of these medications, please let your doctors know so they can give you the appropriate instructions ahead of time, okay? Very, very important. So hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video, and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this video presentation. By the way, don't forget to go to askdrjill.org. Over there, you can also ask questions and also show your support for this very channel, okay? If you've got comments, leave them down below. I think that's it for this video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.